Let's go. Come on, Focus Church. Let's go. Woo. Let's go. Hey, let's give it up for God. Let's go ahead and give God our glory right now. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey. All right, guys. Hey, my name is Pastor Rafael. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, and like I say, look, so it's always a blessing. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. Well, God, God is good. God is good. All right. Hey. Like I said, I'm Pastor Rafael, man, and I'm, I'm super, super excited to be here and honored just to share the word with you guys today. But I want to go ahead and give honor where honor is due. Uh, let's welcome back Pastor Darren and Pastor Jenny. Let's go. Let's go, man. It's first, first week here. Uh, man, I, I, man, I tell you what, this whole summer has been amazing. Uh, the rest of the pastors to share the word, man, they were on point, man. But I tell you what, it's not Pastor Darren's preaching. Let's go. Come on. So let's give it up, Pastor Darren. You know, we can't wait for him to preach next week, man. We can't. I'm excited for it. So uh, I'm just so honored uh, to be up here again, guys. Uh, the rest of the uh, pastors, man, you guys, goodness gracious, this summer specifically has been one of those summers that really pushed us and elevate our leadership to a next level, man. And I just, I'm so thankful and like I said, so blessed to be able to call this my home church and my team that I know, man, it's the wolf pack that whenever something happens, I can go back to them and really, you know, uh, uh, just receive that, 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 the encouragement from them. So let's give it up for the rest of the staff, man. You guys did a great job, man. Um, the, the, I also want to highlight our, 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 you know, our servants, you know, they, man, you guys that come here faithfully, man, I, I'm so thankful that you have the right attitude uh, to come every, you know, weekend and set up and, and, you know, and taking your time to actually make this place what it is, you know, so thank you for that, you know, uh, and having the right attitude, guys, so let's go ahead and give it up for, for our yes. volunteers, come on, let's go, let's go, yes, yes, so today... I have the honor and the pleasure to close out our summer series, which is Name Droppers. And I mean, I tell you what, every time the summer comes around and Name Droppers comes around, man, I, I'm, I'm excited because just the name itself is heavy. Name Droppers, right? Like, like you're about to go into a rap bottle type of deal, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, and I'm not a rapper. I do like to talk, but... Uh, um, <laughs> This kind of hypes me up a little bit, you know, because I hear, oh, name droppers. This, this, this is going to be one of those where it's heavy hitter, and it did not disappoint because learning from each of the pastors and, and their story and, and their teaching that they gave us, man, it, it, it was one that went along with the name. So I am super grateful for that. And the, the verse that, that came, that's out of this year's uh, name dropper series comes out of Hebrew chapter 12, 1, right? So let's look at that scripture real quick. Uh, it says, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by, by such a huge crowd of witness to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, specific, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the, the race that God has set before us. Come on. Come on. And again, I love this, this verse. This verse is, is it was key, but there's so much in this verse, right? But one thing that really, you know, kind of gravitate towards me and that I got that there's this tension that this verse alludes to us as Christians. There's this tension between endurance and a cloud of witness. Okay. Look, it's hard enough making the right decisions. Right. You know, there's an endurance part that we have to make the right decisions. We, you know, we, we go through life and things are hard. Yeah. But then you also have a cloud of witness watching you. Oh, yeah. right. Look, I don't make the right decisions nine times out of ten. As a matter of fact, I probably go down to like a 40%, you know, making the right decision. <laughs> Um, and I don't want anyone watching me <laughs> making the wrong decision, you know. So it brings this tension that as Christians, we have a responsibility to run this race, to run this race in, in, in such a way that we have endurance, right? But then we also have people watching us. Well, okay, so what is this person going to do? Oh, that wasn't, uh, I don't know about that one right there, you know. So it brings this tension, and, and this scripture alludes to this, to this tension that we face as Christians. And let's, let's be real, it's hard. Life is hard. Yes, it is. Uh, and making decisions daily is hard especially the ones that align with God's purpose and, and, and you know, and God's mission here on earth, right? right. So, so, it, so it's really hard that at moments, you know, in my life, I've, I feel like um, I get stuck because things just keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming. And at the same time, I got people watching now that I'm a father, I got, I got my, my kids watching me. And, I, and now that I have, a, a, you know, the opportunity to be here and, and, and you know, share the word, you guys are also the cloud of witness. So uh, there's times where you have seen me that I've not made the right decision. So there's also that pressure that like, oh man, am I making the right decision right now? So it, it, it's really hard. And, and, and 
I love how this scripture points it out. Um, that there is this hard part of us, you know, being Christians and that we have to deal with things. Uh, but then I also realized another thing too. Another thing that I realized too is that there's another thing that's really hard. And can I be real with you guys? Yeah. Parenting is hard. Yeah, yeah. Parenting is hard, y'all, yeah, man. Look, I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, I, my wife and I have the honor and the blessing of raising three kids, right? Um, two of them, uh, the oldest two are, are girls. And we have a, a younger boy, right? And the funny thing about that is that um, this word, that they, they're getting older, this word keeps coming up, keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And every teaching moment, um, and the one word is attitude. Okay. <laughs> Look, this is an elbow free zone, but I'm up here, so I have no elbows next to me. Uh, and let me just say this the two of the girls are, are, are two of all of our girls. And my wife is a, a Hispanic American, you know, from, from San Antonio. That, that word comes out real quick, real, real fast, you know. Um, and I, I know I'll probably get in trouble, but you know what? I'm going to call it what it is. And uh, uh, it, it's just, it's, that word is, keeps coming and coming and coming. Attitude, right? And that's one of the things that, that it, this year specifically has been an emphasis for us for every teaching moment. Attitude, 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 right? So then um, there was this one specific situation when my wife and I, we were kind of like, oh, w- wait a minute. It, it grew, my wife and I as parents, you know, it, it highlighted a moment that we were able to, to, to identify some things. Um, so I'll share a little bit with you with w- how that came about, right? So my oldest wanted to go to a pool and hang out with her friends. Well, how many, know, how many of you guys know as parents that you, you want to give your kids every opportunity for them to, you know, excel and have fun and, and, and do all the things that, that sometimes you didn't get to do or whatever, you know? So we were like, yeah, we want, to, we, want, we want you to go and enjoy yourself and be, you know, with your friends. But life gets in the way, right? And then one thing happened and another thing happened to the point that we're like, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. You know, we can't take you. So whenever she heard that, you should have seen her attitude change. And what also changed, too, was her posture change. Okay. So she went from, oh, you know, to like. Right. And then my, my wife and I were like, oh, okay, she's feeling down right now. Because we, we, we realized that, that her attitude change led to her posture change. So we were able to identify that something was not going on. Something was not right with her. So we went and we were like, hey, I was trying to talk to her talked her through that situation, and then she's like, yeah, but, you know, and then you can see her shoulders, you know, her eyes weren't even locked, and making contact, and, you know, uh, seeing us, uh, she was always looking everywhere, and we can see that something was off. Her posture was affected because her attitude wasn't there. And then it came down to this point, and my wife and I would talk about it. How many times do we have the wrong attitude that leads to having the wrong posture before God? Um, see, life is hard. We don't get what we want all the times, you know? And sometimes the attitude goes unchecked before God. I know I'm full of this. My attitude goes unchecked before God all the times. And I try to correct that. But I know that if I need to come before God, I need to correct my posture. If I need to correct my posture, I need to correct my attitude. Okay, okay. And I tell you this, uh, I know Pastor James talked about this, about the challenges in, in the music that, uh, that last month's challenge, which was listen to only Christian music. And I'm with Pastor uh, uh, James that he said 70% or 80% of his mind is probably like 95, y'all. So, <laughs> and, and that's including Sunday. So, you know, I mean, uh, I, so, you, you, so again, I don't know if it's a good thing, but uh, the, the, what I'm trying to say to you is that it was really, it's, it's really hard. Going through this message, I realized that, that I needed to address my attitude so it can fix my posture before God. Because how many times have I come to God with the wrong posture? How many times have I come and pleaded before God, but my posture wasn't right? Right. There you go. Amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about attitudes. We're going to talk about our posture okay. before the Lord. But before I go any further, let me go ahead and pray for today's message, and we're going to go in there. Father God, I ask you to glorify your name through me, Lord. May you speak to your people. 
May you allow your words to flow through me and may you receive all the glory. May those who need to hear this message, may they receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so, so um, summer series, right? We were talking about, you know, name droppers. So you obviously have to drop a name on y'all, right? But I'm not going to do that. This year is not, is not going to be a name dropper for me, even though I am going to drop many names. But, uh, 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 but in, in, a, in the, I guess I could just say, it's going to be a group of people that I want to be talking about today. And there's so many names that I can't drop all of them because we'll be talking about all the names instead of just the person, right? Anyways, so uh, it's very specifically, we're going to talk about Gideon's 300 men. Gideon's 300 men. And, and how this, 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 uh, uh, this whole decision of, of talking about Gideon's 300 men actually started back in, uh, I think it was March, when uh, um, I had the opportunity to lead uh, our prayer service at 9 a.m. And if, I'm telling you, if you're not here at 9 a.m. or if you haven't had the opportunity, man, I encourage you to go ahead and be here because with the right attitude, man, you see some, uh, man, you see some amazing things. So, um, so anyway, so, so, so back in March, you know, I, I touched briefly on the 300 men, right? And I touched on, on, on how their posture was there. And then uh, Pastor Darren says, hey, that is a prime example of how to fix your posture before God. So it got the thing in me that I'm like, I want to five want to have the right posture before God. I don't want to be that person that doesn't have the right posture. So I went into this, 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 this shift and understanding what affects my posture before God. What, what really is the identified factor of addressing your posture before God? Okay. And, and then going through it, looking at the scripture, reading the story of the 300 men, you know, um, it, it was just one of those things that, that it, it, uh, it just kind of came all together, uh, you know, having those teaching moments with, with our kids. And I'm going to tell you this, with our kids, I, we're trying to do what the Lord tells us to do. And the Lord says to direct your kids in the right path uh, because, you know, when they get older, so they won't depart. So all that kind of just meshed together to the point of like, look, not only do I want to teach my kids, but I want to lead by showing that example. Right, right. Okay. So, um, you know, to the 300 men, you know, we, we're going to look into, in, into the scriptures and we're going to see that there were three attitudes that the, the 300 men really display okay. that will allow them to see and achieve the victory. Okay. A lot of times we don't have the right attitude to come before God that leads us into not experiencing the victory. Okay. okay? So, uh, because we know this, is the scripture is very clear, guys, it's very clear. And there's a, a, um, in a very real part of the scripture that we as believers have to acknowledge. And that, um, that the gospel, the good news, not many are going to receive it. Yeah. Amen. That not many are going to follow it. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be part of that many. Come on. Amen. You know? I don't know about you, but I want to be part of the ones who actually, yes. you know, do the work of yes. God. The, the, the scripture says that um, many are called, but few are chosen. And we see here, guys, that um, in the scripture, specifically with Gideon's 300 men, that is exactly what happened. Right. Many were called, but few were chosen. And I want to be the chosen. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go to the scriptures here. Uh, it's, it's found in Judge chapter 7, verse 1. And uh, um, before we actually go on this, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory of what's happening because um, the, 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 the story of, of Gideon has a lot to do with, with you know, uh, with Gideon's 300 men. Uh, but there's just way too many uh, uh, literature and scripture for us to really go in and start reading verse by verse. Um, but basically what happened is this, is that meeting us um, were just, you know, they were just attacking the Israelites and they weren't allowing them to have any, any crops. They were, I mean, they were just in the complete dominion of, of the, uh, of the Midianites. So Gideon, um, who guys chose to, to lead the victory, to, to lead them into victory, um, you know, went through this process of like him having a doubt of if he was really the one and all this and that. After they, they, he overcame that after God met him where he was at, then God said, okay, look now, 
let's go ahead and get you uh, uh, some people behind you. Let's get you that wolf pack that is going to get you to where you need to go, right? Uh, so this is where we pick up the story when actually Gideon actually, you know, answer that call and receive the call to lead them into, to lead uh, Israel into victory. And now this is where the story picks up. So uh, Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them in the valley of, uh, uh, near the hill of Moret. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let you all fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they save themselves by their own strength. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid, may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving 10,000 who were willing to fight. Woof. Goodness gracious. Bless you, um, <laughs> by the way. Um, but th this, this is what I love about the scripture, right? One thing I want to point out about this. Man, I love that God, that we, we serve a God that understands us. Yeah. And that makes provisions for a lack of stuff because we are some stubborn and some prideful people, man. Sometimes we take too much credit for the things that, 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 are, that are in our lives, man. And I love that the scripture actually points that out. And God says, look, if I let you do this, I know you. I know you're going to. I, I, you know what? I just have a feeling you might take this one. So let's just go ahead and, and uh, uh, let's dial back a little bit. And let me, let me just go ahead and highlight that there's, this is something that, that, that it, it comes from me, you know. But I love the second part of this scripture. He told them that if anyone, uh, you know, was timid or afraid, may leave. And I love that. I love that. Because we talked about fear and we talked about faith and we talked about these things here that, that make us Christians, right? But I believe that the number one attitude that we have to have as Christians is we have to have an attitude of faith. We have to, in our core, we have to believe that God is who he is. Yeah. And that he is the Alpha and the Omega. That he is the creator. Come on. We have to have that. We have to. I remember um, a situation that, 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 that happened in me. Um, a while back, I was 23 years old and... Um, and I had two episodes in my life where I used to get this rush of energy. Like, like I, I used to, like, I either got to run or I, I'm going to pass out type of deal. Okay. And the second time it got really, like, I, that's when I'm like, oh, wait, something's going on here. Because I, I started seeing, like, everything was getting real blurry. And I'm like, oh, man, something's not okay with me. Let me go ahead and go check, check the... Um, at the, the time, was a nurse practitioner that was uh, doing my physicals. Um, and I went in to check in with my nurse practitioner. And then uh, uh, he was like, okay, he's going through his diagnostics and stuff like that. And then he's just telling me about, you know, my choices and all that stuff. And then he, uh, um, and then he, says, he says, hey, let me do an EKG on you just to make sure everything is okay, right? He's like, uh, um, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So he goes and puts his EKG, these little things all over your body that checks your stuff, you know, your, your, you know, your blood flowing throughout your body. And, uh, um, you know, I look like, like a zombie almost, you know, because just all, all over. But anyways, the thing is that, um, so he goes, he does his thing, you know, I'm just sitting down. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm pretty healthy. I mean, I'm working out. I was probably, like, pff, I was fit, man. I'm talking about, I was, I, I was, I was. I was, I was good at that time, you know what I mean? And my, hard to imagine, but, but I, I, was, I was doing pretty good, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, but the thing is this, is that he, did, he does his thing, and, and he puts all that in, and then he leaves, and then he comes back, and he's like, hey, we got to take you to the hospital. I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's backtrack here a little bit. What, what's going on right now? He's like, hey, listen, uh, one of your uh, numbers came out really bad. Uh, you just want to take all precautionary measures to make sure that um, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm like, all right. I'm the patient. You obviously know more than me. That's why I came to you. So I guess we're going to a hospital, right? While we're on our way to the hospital, um, I remember him telling me, because uh, I, I, I went with him, and he's like, hey, um, I just wanted to know that men between the, you know, and the ages of 20, uh, between 20 and 30 experience the most heart problems. That's when men, uh, heart actually, it, 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 it can come up with different conditions. 
Um, basically, what was happening is that one of my numbers and my left ventricle came out super wrong. Uh, and then he felt that there was an enlargement left ventricle that was happening, and then they needed to make sure to verify that because it could lead to a potential heart failure. When he said that, um, <laughs> first, uh, I mean, it was a lot, you know, to comprehend, but I, I do remember that the first response was, oh, crap, I might be in trouble. And I felt that, that fear creep on me. So much uncertainty as far as, man, I, God, I, I want to have a wife. I want to have a family. I want to be able to do all these things. Like, I, I'm serving you, Lord. But then it came down to this, 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 this one thing where I had to check myself. I had to check my attitude. And I said, wait a minute. If I believe God called me and God said who he is he has the victory man Come on. I, I remember that the, 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 the ride to the hospital and I remember saying okay God I don't know anything at this point because everything is coming at me but one thing I do know is that you called me Come on. and I know that you are the ultimate I know that you're the Alpha and the Omega Lord so I, let me not think about what the outcome is but let me worry about who you are so having an attitude of faith is this is focusing more on who God is than in the outcome itself that's, it. that's the first attitude that we have to yes. take as Christians yes. and I realize this is that without an attitude of faith Without having faith, it's hard to see the victory. Yep. It's almost impossible to see the victory. Right. I remember um, getting there, and again, the attitude changed my posture before God because I remember that my, how my 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 posture change drastically from where I received the news and I got like, oh man, I got shooken up by the by, by that um by 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 the news that there could potentially be something wrong with me to the to, then switching back to an attitude of faith and then I'm like, you know, okay God, I don't know. I don't know what the outcome is, but I know faith tells me that you are God. Yep. And the outcome is in your hands. And I serve you. Yes. Why is that so important as far as the, uh, the story of Gideon? It's because that the first batch of people who had to exit was those who were timid or afraid. Right. Amen. The people who couldn't see the victory, yeah. who didn't have faith. Right. Yeah. You got to go. That's hard. It's a hard teaching for us as Christians. Why? Because... I don't know about you, but if you're sitting here, that means you at least know about who Jesus is, right? And, and, and you have, you know, I, I'm not going to judge your, your relationship with, with Jesus, but I do know this, is that he has called you to something bigger, and that he has, he has, he has, cho he has choosing you for something more, but it's up to you to answer that. That's Having the right attitude fixes the right posture. So after I uh, uh, got down and, and, and went through this whole process of, of, of having an attitude of faith, my posture changed before God because now I'm saying, okay, God, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that you're in charge. And I, can f I felt that confidence come back up where it has left me. And I can only see that with Gideon and his 300 men, the first thing that he needed to erase from the people that were going to lead them into victory is those people who believe that God is who he said he is. First thing, I feel like the, 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 having an attitude of faith is taking a step towards God and seeing that vision, seeing that victory, because without faith, it is impossible to see the victory. Without knowing that God is, this, who, without knowing that God is who he is, it is impossible to see the outcome that, 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 that is in store for you. That's it, preach, man. That's good. And that's the first attitude that I really wanted to focus on today, the attitude of faith, because it's necessary. It has to be the very core belief of us as Christians. We have to believe that God is, you know, is who he, is, he says he is. Yes. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and, and jump into, uh, keep going, right? Now I got another, another attitude for you guys. So let's, let's pick the story up on uh, verse 4 to 7, right? It says, the Lord 
um, the, the Lord told Gideon, but the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told them, divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who, who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. And another, in another group, put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouth in the stream. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands and all others got down on their knees and drank, their, uh, drank, their, drank with their mouth in the stream. But the Lord told Gideon, with this 300 men, I will rescue you and give you the victory of the Midianites. Send all the others home. There's a lot here, and I know I got twisted a couple of times there because there's a lot of scripture in there. But this is, this, this is one of the scriptures that I had to actually go back in um, and, and, and really pay attention to, right? Because, see, the scripture says here that, that after that, that 22 went home and now that, that 10,000 were left, that, that only 300 out of the 10,000 got, 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 got chosen, right? And, and, and again, God also you know, knows us. So he's like, Hey, I know you're going to take this victory too. So let's go ahead and, and, and dial back a little more. And then he says, All right, look, I'm going to give you this amount of people. But, but and, and when I was reading this, I'm like, well, what's wrong with this? I, I want a person who fully submits and then kneels down and drinks for the water. Right. I mean, the, if he, the, let me demonstrate. Right. So this is how, <laughs> this is how I would imagine if I was part of that 10,000 that was left, right. And like, Hey, drink water. I'm going to go down and I'm like, boop, I'm about to drink, right? I'm thirsty. I don't know what type of training. I don't know if they live in Arizona or not, but I, I've seen some pictures and it's pretty desert over there. So I, I, again, I don't know, but I, I had to put myself in that scripture and I had to put myself in that time of, 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 uh, of, you know, of, of, of the world. And, um, and I had to really analyze why only the 300 men that cupped the water and drank like, like, like the dog, like dogs were selected. And I realized this, right? Is that the, the first attitude was, Hey, you need to to, to align yourself with the vision of God, right? You need to make sure that you, that you act in faith. That means you, you have that core in your heart, right? And then the second one is this. Now, um, the second attitude is this, is that you have to have an attitude of alertness. Okay. See, and this is where it click. If you go down, I'm going to demonstrate again. <laughs> I should have done it before, but anyway. You go here. You cut off all your vision. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You drink like this, and now you're staying alert. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Again, this alludes a little more to your actual posture of staying alert, but I, it brings a very amazing example of your spiritual posture too. I feel like after you believed and acted in faith, the next thing you got to do, you got to align yourself with the mission. Okay. Amen. First, you, you, okay, you align yourself with, 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 you know, with faith, and then you align yourself with the mission that God has given you. Amen. And that mission says, hey, stay focused. Yeah. There's a lot of things, now more than ever, there's a lot of things that come against us. Right. There's a lot of things that are going to keep coming against yeah. it, against us. And sometimes there are, are going to be things that you're like, oh, well, that's not that bad. You know, you know, um, I want my kids to do this. I want my kids to do that. Or, or oh, I want to go ahead and, and do these other things that, that uh, uh, are, are good, but can sometimes throw you off of alignment that's for right. what God wants you to do. Yeah. And we see that the 300 men here, they chose to stay alert by fixing their posture as far as how they were drinking because they knew that they were getting, they were getting ready to go into a battle and that they were getting ready to receive a victory. Yeah. But if you don't stay alert and what the victory and what the mission is, how are you going to be able to identify the victory? How are you going to be able to receive instructions? So being able to 
cupping it and staying alert, it allows you to put yourself in a situation where you are staying grounded in God's word so you know what the mission is. There are so many things that are coming against us as believers that we have to understand that. I, I am sick and tired, guys, and I'm going to bend a little bit here, that we have all these things coming against us in the news and, 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 and all these things that might, might be dressed as righteous, but they do not go along with what God says to do. And we as Christians have to be able to align ourselves with the mission of God. I don't want to be just, I don't want to be just cold. I want to be chosen. If you want to be chosen, you got to be able to align yourself with that. And sometimes that's making hard decisions. That sometimes might not make sense. Jesus gives us an encouragement in Matthew 10, 16. And I'm reading out a message because I love how the message puts this together. Stay Alert. This hazardous work that I'm, I'm assigning you, you're going to be ship, ships uh, uh, running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourself. Be true as a snake, in, inoffensive as a dove. Jesus understood that this was not going to be easy. That's right. Jesus understood that they, they, there is a real enemy in this world. Amen. And that this enemy is coming against us. Yep. And I don't know about you, but guess what? The enemy is it's, it's deceiving. It's, it's conniving at times, you know, where it dresses something that it might, might appear illusion of righteous, but all is in the path of destruction. And as Christians, it's a responsibility to align ourselves, to take this attitude of alertness and dive into the word and understand what God is requiring of us so we can have the victory. I came to a position where um, I, 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 I've been, been reading and reading and reading about different things and sometimes, them, you know, uh, uh, make sense, sometimes doesn't make sense. But I came down to this one thing. I, I came, um, uh, you know, I, I came to this part of my life where I, I really was interested in, in seeing the different agencies in, in the government and, and, and what they would do, right? And one that really captivated me, captivated me was the, the, the Secret Service, right? In the Secret Service, um, what I learned was that their job was, uh, part of their responsibilities is to identify fake currency. Right. And, um, and back in like 1920s or something like that, back, back in the days, you know, um, there was this agent that got really good on identifying fake currency. And later in his life, he did an interview. And in this interview, the, the, the reporter was like, hey, how did you do it? How were you able to identify so many fake currencies? Did you have to memorize the different techniques? And he said, no, it was actually pretty easy. He's like, I memorized what was true. That's it. Yeah. Amen. That's it. And if I know what's true, I'm able to identify what's fake. That's the attitude of alertness. Yeah. Amen. Knowing what is true so you can identify what is fake. Right. The attitude of staying alert is one that we have to take as Christians. We cannot, we cannot keep getting tossed from one side of another with this whole different things that come against us. You have to dive into the scripture. You have to put it in your heart so you can see when things are, are coming against you that are not aligned with the mission. The 300 men made that decision. The 300 men, by, by, by having that and making that, the, 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 you know, the, the whole cup in the water in their hands, they understood that they needed to stay in, in the attitude of alertness and stay in mission. Again, guys, the first attitude is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the vision because I believe in God, the attitude of faith. And then the second one is the attitude of alertness. It's aligning yourself with the mission that God has for us. Good. I love that. And this is, a, um, 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 this is an, a, we're going to 
continue on with, with uh, all the attitudes. So we went, went through, through already. The, the first one is a f attitude of faith, and the second one is attitude of alertness. And then this is, this is another one that um, <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and, and bring home, um, but I want to go ahead and read Judges uh, verses uh, chapter 7, verses 7 to 20, because I believe that this scripture right here, this verse specifically, is going to wrap up a lot of the things that, um, that, 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 that we as Christians have to, you know, embody and, and we have to make sure that we take hold of. Um, so Judges, uh, Judges 7, verses 17 to 20, um, then he said to them, keep your eyes on me when I come to the edge of the camp. And this is, this is Gideon talking to the 300 men. Uh, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those who blow the horns, uh, the ram's horn, blow your horns too. And all around the entire camp and shout for the Lord and Gideon. It was just after midnight, after the changing of guards, when Gideon and the hundred men with him reached, reached the edge of the midnight camp. Suddenly they blew their horns uh, their, their rams horn and broke their clay, jo their clay jars. Uh, and all three groups blew their horns and broke their yards. And, and they held the blazing torches in, the, in their left hands and the horns in their right hands. And they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Now, let me just kind of catch you up to what happened here, right? So now, um, now that the selection process kind of already uh, uh, happened to where you had uh, God you know, telling the people who were afraid, who didn't, who didn't, who didn't really believe that, that God ha is who he is, to uh, uh, the people who didn't align themselves with God and the mission that God has with them. Now, now we, we, ha we have come to where he selected the 300 men, and now it is acting yes. on that. And I love how, how Gideon... Divided the 300 men into, into, into groups of 100. And he said, listen, on my command, praise. And it, it put me in this position, guys. And I don't know about you, uh, but, but in order for me to fix my, my, my posture before God, in order for me to, 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 to really address the things that God is doing in my life, I have to do what first thing is take the attitude of faith, which means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and, and believe that God says who's, who he says he is. And then I'm going to align myself with the mission of God. And the third thing is this. I'm going to praise God. You know why? Because praise is seeing the victory without having a victory. See, the 300 men went through this process, this selection process, when they had to go through, through, through things that, 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 again, that might seem a little weird as far as cupping the water and all this stuff like that. But what God was really looking for is, are you willing to do the things that I'm telling you to do without you seeing the victory? How many times as Christians we walk around and that I can only praise him if I feel good today? Or I can only believe if, 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 I, if I know that, that I, I got a security deposit in the bank already where uh, it, it, I know it's going to be okay. But when you're in lack, can you still praise? When we come to church and we praise with everything that we got, how is your posture? Are you... Oh, yeah, that's a good song right there. <laughs> and maybe you're not the type of person that moves, but I want to tell you this, is that whenever you have those attitudes, there's something inside of you that is not going to, is not going to make you stay quiet. There's something inside of me that whenever I sit here and I hear the praising God and hearing those reminders that God is good, guess what? Something inside of me ignites and I just can't do anything but say, you know what, God, I know you're good. That's it. That's it. I don't know what tomorrow might store. I don't know what might come against me today or tomorrow, but I know who you are. Right. And I know that my praise yeah. is exactly what the scripture says. Faith without works is dead. Praising is the works. Not seeing the victory, not seeing the provision just yet. But you know it's there. Come on now. Amen. And that, you can see the 300 men. I don't know what's going to happen. They were in, in, in captivity of these Midianites. They were tor tormenting them. 
What changed? It's, it wasn't something that, that the meeting has just all, all of a sudden decided to to do a, a, all right, you know what, we're going to leave you guys or, or something. No, nothing has changed. Those 300 men still knew that the millionaires were coming against them and they were still having that, that those things that, that were tormenting the people of Israel. But what changed is this, is that the, those 300 men decided to say, you know what, it is up to God to bring the victory. And if you're struggling with one of those, those things, I would encourage you to go back to an attitude of faith. I want to encourage you to go back to an attitude of, of alertness. See, the victory is the Lord's, it's not ours. Yes. Amen. Praise is not something there's an option. Praise is a mandate in your life as Christians. I share in the beginning how not having the right attitude uh, really affected me, especially with the Christian music. But I realized this is that not having the right attitude stole a lot of joy for me. Specifically with the challenge of, of music. Three ways in, I caught myself reciting the verses of a song on my way to a job. And I'm like, oh man, that song rocks. <laughs> and, I'm, and it just changed my posture. Because instead of saying, God, oh man, God sucks out here, it's hot. <laughs> I went from that to saying, God, you are good. Yeah. Yeah. And God, I, man, I'm gonna give you praise. Yeah. Because I know you have me here doing this work. And if this is what it takes to give you glory, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I am not going to be just cold. I want to be chosen, Lord. I am tired of having to sit down. I want to do the works that you asked me to do. I want to feel the presence of God in my life. And I want others to know that God is good. The attitude of praise is a necessity in our hearts if we want to fix our posture before God. There's a story, and David, and David is bringing back the Ark of the Covenant to, uh, to Jerusalem. And this is this, 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 this beautiful uh, story in 2 Samuel 12, 7, 9. I just want to highlight that um, because um, David is bringing back the Ark because the Ark was taken away uh, for the, the, because of the disobedience of the Israelites. So now the presence of God is coming back to Jerusalem. It's coming back home, and David can't contain himself. David's like... It's coming back. Yeah. I feel the presence of God. It's coming back where it belongs. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to praise him. You know why? Because the presence of God is here now. It's no longer over there. It's here now. And guess what? There's people that came against him like, hey, what are you doing, David? What, why are you acting all crazy for? Because uh, this does not go along with what our culture tells us about praising God. So you need to check yourself, David. And guess what David said? No, I'm not. Because guess what? The presence of God is coming back to where it belongs. And I will become a dignified and a shame if I have to, to give God the glory. So I don't know about you, church, but that's the attitude that I want to have in faith. I want to make sure that I give God the glory regardless because I know the presence of God is in me. So let's go ahead and get up today, church, and let's give God all that. Let's fix our posture with everything that we got. And we say, God, the victory is yours. It's no longer. It is no longer. It is no longer about me, Lord. It's about you. And I will align myself with you and your mission. And I will give you the praise. Hallelujah. 
Praise Him. Many are called, but few are chosen. Are you chosen? Are you called? If you are, how's your posture? How's your attitude of faith? How's your attitude of alertness? How's your praise? It's not for me to answer for you. It's for you to answer yourself. We serve a God that is worthy. We serve a God that, <laughs> that understands us. And he deserves all the glory. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to become even more dignified when Pastor Frankie comes and, wor and, and leads us to worship. We're going to give God everything because we understand that he is good. So church, let's get loud and let's say, God, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.